Okay. Hey, everybody. So, um, I'm going to be uh, I'm doing a double video right now. We're uh, we're going to be doing some very important tips on club fitting. I know many of you uh, are looking to get some some proper equipment this year, and uh, also I'm I'm going to take advantage of the. Um, the opportunity to let you know about uh, these new clubs. I got uh, my new Nike blades this year and the new Fairway Woods and, uh, and, and Driver and they're off the charts spectacular. Reason being, you know, number one, they feel amazing. But you notice the, the, the problem with blades for the longest time is that there's been a lot of weight in the hosel and they haven't been able to offset that weight properly. And you notice there's a little bit more weight toward the toe on this unit which offsets the weight in the hosel and puts the sweet spot exactly in the center of the club face. So now, you know, we don't have to worry about you know, sweet spots, you'll notice uh, a lot of the blades of sweet spots are a little closer to the heel of the club. Okay? So, uh, say hey to Paul, by the way. We're, uh, we've got a shotgun uh, going on right now on the golf course and there's some thunderstorms looming, so I've got my day off and this is, the, this is my opportunity to come and help you guys. And uh, meanwhile, Paul still has a job to do, so he'll be moving, he'll, he'll be moving about. So, First and foremost, when you go get fitted for a set of clubs, it's extremely important that you have a target and a ball flight in mind to deliver to that target. Because, you know, I'll give you a, 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 a story of one of my students who went to a very prominent manufacturer, we won't tell you who it is, it wasn't Nike, um, right here in the city. And uh, they have a fitting center here, and it's a very busy fitting center. And so he went out there to get himself uh, fit for a new set of irons. And um, so he proceeds to, it's an indoor facility, so he proceeds to get in there. And they don't have keep out signs behind their nettings, they have nothing. And uh, so he, he, um, he's got all this stuff and all this gear and the track mine behind him and all these distractions. And he proceeds to hit his first shot and he, he pulls it violently to the left with a very low ball flight and pretty much the whole session was nothing but that. So the person in charge of the fitting said, well, looks like you're hitting a lot of shots to the left, so let's make the lie flatter by 1.5 degrees to offset that so that you hit it straighter. And because he was coming over the top, because the ball was his target. Obviously, if you, make, if you make the ball your target and you go for the golf ball, you're no longer going to the target. You're moving well left of the target and you're de-lofting the club substantially. So then they said, well, because you're hitting the ball flight a little low and a little, you know, not enough spin on the ball, well, what we need to do is weaken the lofts by a couple of degrees. So. He comes, he said, you know, thank goodness he's got a session with me every Saturday morning. And he shows up that Saturday after he went for the fitting that week. And he says, Sean, there's something really weird about the fitting I just got. And he explained to me how it went. And the first question I, I asked him is, well, what was your target? And he goes, oh, no. And he says, ah, I, I didn't even have a target. And now he understood why he pulled it to the left. So now I said, when you receive these clubs and you actually swing to a target, everything's going to be short and right. So right away he called them up and canceled the order. I did a fitting for him so he knew at least what set of clubs that he really liked the feel of. So we put him on a lie board, we had him swing to the keep out sign, we got the lie and it was stock standard as far as the, the lie was concerned. And same thing with the length of the club, because, you know, he's not, he's not overly tall, overly short, he fit pretty much in the mold of a standard club and we just had to pick the right grip and the right size grip. So we called him back and gave him the new specs and got his clubs and he had a fantastic season last summer. But that could have easily been, you know, a, a little bit of a blunder. I know that you can go back and get them reset and readjusted, but it, it can be a little more tedious if, if the club is not a blade or, or um, it doesn't have a, um, a material that's soft enough where you can make adjustments. Some of them are pre-adjusted through the mold. So if you, if you buy a cast club, it has stress memory on it. If you try to bend it, it'll usually come back to its original setting or it'll just snap. So not a good situation. So you want to make sure you get the proper fitting right out of the gate. 
So I have a target. I have my focus on that target. I deliver to the target and then I tell my fitter please use that data because I stayed focused on my target and I really delivered nicely into my picture. That is what I'm working towards. That's what I'm going to develop and really improve upon. So that is, that's the data that you need to use to let me know what shaft flex I need to use and, and the shaft length and all that stuff. So mostly for, for the flexibility of the shaft and the, and the weight of the shaft is going to depend on that particular data right there. So if you deliver at the ball, and then the club head speed delivered at the ball was, you know, X, Y, Z, which is a lot, a lot less than the one I delivered to the target with. If you use that data and put that in the mix, it's just not going to jive at all. It's probably going to have a, a shaft that's going to be way too soft for you, okay? So number one, you are the boss of that fitting, okay? The person who's there is there to help you out. Um, please do not put all of your faith in that particular individual. He does know a lot, yes. He knows the material. You need to give him the proper data, okay? And that comes from your proper focus to the target. So make sure you have a target. Make sure you're properly warmed up and you feel like you're delivering to the target with low strain and a nice velocity. And pick a flight that you're going to, that you, that you're going to use. Pick a flight that you, you typically like to, to use. You'll notice that my fades, the club head speed just a hair faster than my draws. That's because I'm, I'm collecting the ball a little earlier with the draw and a little bit later with the fade, okay? So, I mean, it's not enough to really bear in mind because it's, it's a difference of two, three miles per hour. But, uh, you know, pick something that you're comfortable with that you know you're going to be able to swing through to the target with. So, on that note, the best thing for you to do as far as irons are concerned is make sure you try the different models to make you know to, to, to feel which one works best for you. You pick up a Callaway and then you compare that to a TaylorMade, compare that to a Nike, you're going to see a lot of differences not only in cosmetics but in, in feel. Even if they've got the same shaft and the same shaft flex on them, you're going to notice that they feel very different one from the next. One of those is going to feel way better for you. The only way that you can know is if you hit the shots with them. So hit about five shots with each model, put tape on the face of the club to see where the ball print is going to be, and then after five shots to a target with proper focus, see where the ball prints are. If there's three out of five in the center of the club face with a Nike and the other two are very close, well that goes in the yes pile. And then if you, if, for example, if you try Callaway and you hit one off the toe, one off the heel, one off the bottom, one off the top, and then the fitter says, well, I can tweak that for you with the proper shaft and the length and everything else. No, 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 no. Don't trust that. You're going to see that many clubs perform very differently, many weight configurations. So start with the proper weight configuration. Just set, up, set it up standard if you want to right out of the gate and really get a feel for the club first. Then the fitter can fit you with the proper shaft flex, the proper shaft length, the proper grip size, and everything else. Okay? So I hope that helped. I know it will. Okay? And you do exactly the same thing with the woods. So you try the, try the, the, the weight configuration first. Ballpark the shaft flex of the driver. So if you got stiff flex for the irons, well obviously you want to go stiff flex with the driver. And then you'll see, you know, different shaft material, you know, the, the different specs from different companies and, and don't go too light, okay? You go for something that you can feel the weight of. If it feels a little too light, you, you won't be able to, to feel it track for you and consequently, if you don't feel where the club is because you're a gravity expert and we took your ability to, to feel where gravity is, it's not going to work very well, okay? So make sure you feel the weight of that club and then deliver the, deliver the goods to a target, really pick your flight and then you'll be able to determine the proper ball launch and the proper ball spin. Because with the driver, you think about it, we're catching the ball on the way up, correct? So I got my tee here and I'm delivering to my target and I want to feel like I'm clipping the tee on the way up and on my way to the target. So if I default to the ball, well now I'm hitting down on the ball to the left across 
way less club head speed, way more spin. So you can't use the data if you're swinging toward the ball. You got to feel that you're releasing. When you remember we talked about fencing sword for power or throwing the club. If I throw the club to the target and I don't let it go, you're going to feel the weight of the club snap your hand, your, your right hand over the left hand for the right-handed golfer out here. You're going to feel a nice tug on your shoulder sockets out here. So if you default to the ball, you're going to feel a very roundhouse finish. Everything's going to tend to go left and slice right. But most of all, you won't get the proper uh, uh, shaft flex data and you, you're not going to get the proper spin data as well. When we put the track man here or, the, or our flight scope, you know, I can launch it at 20 degrees or I can launch it at 5 degrees depending on the flight that I pick out there. So you say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit it a certain height in the net. There's the height I want. There's my target. I'm going to feel a nice release into that height. Yes, I released into that height. Okay, Mr. Fitter, what was my data on that one? Because I know for a fact I released out there and I felt some good speed on that one and that's, that's the data I'd like you to use for my fitting. Same thing for fairway woods and same thing for hybrids, okay? Enjoy that and we'll see you in the next video.